week. Patrick Kane, Alex Debrinkett, Alex Nylander, Malcolm Subban showing up today. All workouts during Phase 2 at team training facilities are limited to small groups of six players at a time with a limited number of team staff. The Hawks will be 12th in the Western Conference when the playoffs begin next month. The players made a counter-proposal to the owners today in baseball, offering up an 89-game schedule with full prorated pay. This is the day after MLB cut its proposed schedule to 76 games, but with only 75% of prorated play. The players remain adamant they receive their full prorated salaries. Each side, though, in agreement on expanded playoffs, featuring as many as 16 teams. Even with all that turmoil getting back baseball underway, the draft will start tonight. First round and compensatory picks, 37 in all, will be made tonight. This year's draft is five rounds down from the usual 40. The White Sox pick is number 11. The Cubs select number 16, Detroit, as the first overall selection. On the home of the Blackhawks, Northwestern Wildcats and White Sox baseball, Andy Mazur, WGN Sports. Your money on WGN, sponsored by T-Mobile for Business. Visit t mobileforbusiness.com. The Dow closed down 282 points today. NASDAQ up 66. The S&P 500 down 17 points. I'm Kim Gordon on Chicago's very own 720 WGN. T-Mobile and Sprint are joining forces to build a network that will cover more offices and employees across the country. You'll get the largest and most reliable network at an unbeatable price. Visit T-MobileForBusiness.com to learn more. Jay Farner here, CEO of Rocket Mortgage. Making the right financial decisions has never been more important. When you turn to Rocket Mortgage, we can help guide you to those right decisions now when they matter most. Mortgage rates are near historic lows, so now is a great time to call 8338-ROCKET. And if you need some extra money, a cash-out refinance could give you that financial boost you're looking for. Call today at 8338-ROCKET or go to rocketmortgage.com to learn more. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. License in all 50 states. And MLS number 3030. Hey there, homeowners. Have you had that annoying experience of low water pressure in the shower where you hardly had enough pressure to wash the shampoo out of your hair? You know, the same shower that you have to yell, don't flush the toilet, I'm in the shower. Don't put up with this anymore. It's time to get rid of those old rusty corroded pipes and get brand new PEX or copper pipes. Repipe Specialist does repiping unlike anyone else. It's all they do. They've been giving customers great water pressure, clean, clear water, and a pipe leak-free home for over 27 years, serving over 50,000 customers. All in just one to two days at half the cost of a plumber with a lifetime guarantee. Everyone deserves great water pressure. And no more rusty colored water or pipe leaks. Call us today for your free in-home estimate, customized for your home. We'll even take 20% off our already low price. Price when you call us today, Repipe Specialists. 800 216 0195. 800 216 0195. That's 800 216 0195. I want to play a little uh, press relief. Some things that happened today, the announcements that were made. Now, this phone conversation that got leaked between the mayor and Alderman Lopez. And this was all part of a big conference call between all the aldermen, the mayor, and some other city officials that this happened on May 31st, a week, a week ago last Sunday. And obviously, you know what a crazy day that was in Chicago. One of the craziest, most violent days in Chicago history. As a matter of fact, 18 people died on that day. 18 people died on that day. 25 total over the weekend. 85 people shot in Chicago that weekend the, of the 29th, 30th, and 31st of May. The looting, the carnage, the damage. I mean, it, you saw it all happen live on television. So in the middle of all that, on Sunday in the afternoon into the evening, they were having a 90-minute phone conversation about strategy and which way everything was going to go. And uh, a fight broke out between Alderman Lopez from the southwest side and Lori Lightfoot, the mayor of the city of Chicago. And it sounded a little something like this. What are we going to do and what do we tell our residents other than good faith people stand up? It's not going to be enough. Thank you, Alderman. Next question. Well, no, I want an answer. I bet you commented on everybody. I want an answer. It's not something you ignore. This is a Honor, question that I have. I think you're 100 percent. I think you're 100 percent full of shit. Is what I think. If you think well, we no offense, well, you then. Who if are you, you to tell me I'm full of shit? If you think if you think and we were not ready and we stood by and let the neighborhood go up, there's nothing intelligent that I can say to you. Well, maybe you should come out and see stupid, what's going on. This is the stupidest thing I have ever heard. I understand you want to preach. I understand that 
that you think that you Mayor, you need to check your attitude. That's what you need to do. Right now, no. You need to check your attitude. Wait a minute. I'm being disrespectful. You just told me I'm full of We, 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 hey, no. I like the one alderman who is like, uh, hey, 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 everybody, can't we just get along? Not so easy, is it? Welcome to Chicago. All right, so then Alderman Ray Lopez decides he's going to go on the Fox News channel, and he goes on Laura Ingram's show last night and says this. She and I both won my ward. I will, as its representative to the city council, she is our mayor. And it's really unfortunate for the people that I, we both represent to not be able to work together despite attempts in the past, especially during one of the most horrific times in our city's history when quite literally people were, as you said, organi- creating organized chaos in our neighborhoods. And I was basically pleading for help, pleading for her to take serious the concerns that we had seen in the neighborhoods. And it was not only uh, falling on deaf ears, it was outright dismissed. Yeah. Okay. Now, I, I would warn, if I could just uh, give a little bit of free press advice here, I would warn that going on Laura Ingram's show uh, is not in, I, th- I don't think it was necessarily in the best interests of the aldermen because I don't think that that show is really designed to make Chicago or anything that happens here good or bad to be presented in the in the best light it's basically uh a that that show i think specifically there's a couple others i can think of but hers specifically uh does not help the situation so i know there's i know it's 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 in it certainly is alluring to get on a national show like that and it's highly rated but that the intent of that show is to make chicago look like it's a jungle I can tell you that right now. So anyway, but that was so here was the mayor's response today. She was asked about uh, Alderman Lopez's comments. First of all, um, if you heard the entirety of the conversation, um, it was, I believe, on a sun- Sunday night. Um, that w- it, the conversation went for an hour and a half. And unfortunately, one of the aldermen, and I think we know who it is, illegally taped and then shared only that portion of the conversation that served his purposes. What I'll say is this, these are tough and difficult times and we ought to be able to have candid conversations. There were a lot of incredible emotions that were shared on that call by fellow aldermen, now all of whom don't feel secure or safe coming together with their colleagues because of one individual who decided to illegally tape a conversation that was intended to be a private conversation among all of us. Shame on him. Shame on him. That's what I say. Okay, that's what she says. Well, let me also tell you what she says, that that it, it's illegal to take that conversation. I don't think it actually is. I don't think there was any um, assumption of privacy when you're having a phone call with at least 51 people. I think there were close to 60 people on that phone call. So, all right, whatever, whatever. Okay. Again, that's off the point. That's off the point. Let's start talking about this. Let's let's start talking about what we can do to make this better. Let's have that conversation instead. And then the mayor, let me get to something I really care about. Then the mayor was asked this. She was asked this. She was asked, well, what, what about bars being able to open for outdoor seating like restaurants do? Why can't bars do it? Why is that allowed, but we're not opening bar patios? It, it shouldn't be. If she's got a list... Um, we'll make sure that we remedy that situation. We haven't opened up the restaurants as a pretense to um, allow bar drinking that wouldn't otherwise be authorized. All right. I still don't know if that's the answer I'm looking for. I would like bars to be able to open for the outside, too. That's what I would like. Ben Bradley will join us on the other side, and I, I'm sure he will su- support my movement here if i can just stand up for one damn thing today it's going to be that although i've stood up for about 15 different things today lauren lapka though 
She's watching the uh, the roads. She's watching the skies. She is watching the streets. What's happening? I'm watching everything. Uh, but this is brought to you by the Illinois Department of Transportation. A few fallen trees to be aware of. One in Wadsworth on Dilly's north of Wadsworth Road. Another on the southwest side on Avers near 47th. And one in Harvey that fell on a vehicle at 148th and Wood. And in Green Oaks, there are fallen power cables on Route 137 at River Road. I'm Lauren Lapka from the IDOT Traffic Center reminding you to drive responsibly. It really is a matter of life or death. Cleaning up around the house lately? Wondering if that old autograph is worth money? Is your sports memorabilia trash or treasure? Call in and ask our expert after the 7.30 a.m. news. Quarantainment in the morning. Bob's the Rock, Radio Chicago, WGN. Caitlin was my daughter. She was killed on I-57 because someone was selfish enough to, to pick up their phone and take their eyes off the road. And he said it was Caitlin. Um, I just remember like, crying out no. And I like, fell to the ground. I'm still angry, no, no doubt about that. I'll always be angry. His eyes weren't on the road and my daughter's dead. <laughs> Learn more about Caitlin at lifeordeathillinois.com. Hi, this is Lou Manfredini, and I have John Rogers on the line, the president of Rogers Roofing, your trusted roofing contractor for over 50 years. John, the health and safety of homeowners and your employees is always your top priority. What is Rogers Roofing doing during these challenging times? Lou, like most of us, we're monitoring the health concerns facing our communities. We've taken numerous actions to do our part in helping limit the spread of the virus while still providing homeowners the exceptional products and services they've come to expect. We are essential and we are working. So if someone has damage or is in need of a new roof or new siding, is this a good time to call Rogers Roofing? Absolutely. We'll provide you a virtual estimate in the comfort of your own home. And our production team is following the enhanced health precaution guidelines from the CDC and practice social distancing. Plus, we're providing our very best pricing and financing ever. I want to help our customers during these trying times and keep our employees working. Call Rogers Roofing for a free virtual estimate. 800 New Roof. That's 800 New Roof roof or log on to rogersroofing.com. Hey, I'm Andy. If you don't know me, it's probably because I'm not famous. But I did start a men's grooming company called Harry's. The idea for Harry's came out of a frustrating experience I had buying razor blades. Most brands were overpriced, overdesigned, and out of touch. At Harry's, our approach is simple. Here's our secret. We make sharp, durable blades and sell them at honest prices for as low as $2 each. We care about quality so much that we do some crazy things like by a world-class German blade factory. Obsessing over every detail means we're confident in offering a 100% quality guarantee. Millions of guys have already made the switch to Harry's, so thank you if you're one of them. And if you're not, we hope you give us a try with this special offer. Get a Harry starter set with a five-blade razor, weighted handle, shave gel, and a travel cover, all for just three bucks plus free shipping. Just go to harrys.com and enter 7750 at checkout. That's harrys.com code 7750. Enjoy. Early morning. Stay safe and stay connected with Morgan Kochmeyer's weather forecast and Sarah Ginger's traffic reports weekdays 4 to 6 on WGN-TV Morning News. It's the Rokan Show on 720 WGN Radio. That's in Chicago. On WGN-TV, the Niner. That's in Chicago. Ben Bradley holds forth every afternoon as the anchor at 4 o'clock. And, and then often the anchor at all these other times, too. And then he does these <laughs> investigative reports. He does all this other stuff. The man never stops working. Actually, you've got a report tonight about the cost of COVID, right? Yeah, we've been periodically updating this story as those bills come in and it is really interesting to see how the costs have added up first of all illinois has spent more than half a billion dollars uh, battling covid 19 so far now they say that half a billion is reimbursable from the federal government through the cares act and in fact there's more money out there to be had but the federal restrictions on that money mean it has means it has to be used directly for a covid related expense they can't like backfill oh we lost sales tax revenue can you help us out doesn't work like that so we started looking at what has been a covid related expense and how they add up and it's really interesting you've got 104 million dollars to reimburse the chicago board of education and other school districts nonprofits that provided meals during the pandemic 11 million to staff that that field hospital at mccormick place that only saw about 38 patients um, there's a, um, a uh, 
politically political consulting firm uh, that's connected to Governor Pritzker's campaign that got three hundred ninety five thousand to help place ads uh, for public service announcements about covid. And then this one was really interesting. The state spent two hundred eighty four thousand dollars for sliced bread. What? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. $284,000 for sliced bread. Yes. And the reason? The Illinois Department of Corrections actually operates a bakery at its prisons, and so they kind of bake their own bread for use inside the corrections facilities. Well, because of COVID, they had to shut those bakeries down and go out and buy bread for inmates. That's a COVID cost, according to the state of Illinois. It kind of is. I mean, I would certainly, yeah. my accountant would make that work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it really is interesting. We'll go through some of these others, um, including we found a uh, million dollars spent to rent hotel rooms that were never used. Um, now, let's just say that People are going to be very frustrated by this. And you know who gets most frustrated are those who think that there has been an overreaction to the COVID. And the governor and his team said very early in March, they said, look, if we do everything right, people will say we overreacted Mm -hmm. uh, because we were able to bend the curve and we didn't need that excess capacity. Mayor Lightfoot today uh, actually said that the early models had... Illinois on track to look more like Italy in terms of overflow of hospitals, deaths, et cetera. So yes, you know, our, our, our local leaders were in a no win situation Correct. and they were operating on projections that now everyone likes to look back and say, Oh, well, you know, how did they listen to the, well, nobody knew whether people would listen to a stay at home order. Nobody knew how that would affect the outbreak. Nobody knew how people would would act under those situations. Would they really be able to control the spread? These were uncharted waters. But, you know, so our report is not saying, oh, you should or shouldn't have done that. It's just saying, hey, there's a price associated with all of it. And just saying, oh, well, we're going to get reimbursed from the feds. Uh, Guess where federal money comes from? Us. Yep. Yeah, those of us here. That's right. I know people get that confused all the time, but whatever. That here's here's the bottom line, Ben Bradley, is that they made good calls early on. They were listening to the guidance, not only of the modelers here at the University of Illinois, who were great, University of Chicago had modelers working on this. They were looking at the national models. Fauci's guys in Washington were doing this as well. Men and women were doing this as well. So that was, it, it was good. And they made good decisions, and Illinoisans did the right thing. In the main, especially in this area, in this metropolitan area, where you really did need to be extra special careful. I think in Madison County, a little different than it would be up here. Mm-hmm. So that's a, that is a, uh, a it's it's on everybody doing a good job, and the medical professionals did an amazing job of keeping it contained right. in the hospitals. The way that I mean, we do a lot of stuff with Northwestern, right? There, but we're partners with them in a lot of ways. And so Northwestern, the way that they actually created different intakes in ways that that they were able to segregate the COVID patients from the non-COVID patients. My mom was in the hospital during all of this and, you know, it was, uh, we couldn't go to see her, but you know, she was, she was kept safe, which was amazing because that was like the biggest right at the beginning of the, of the real surge in this. And I was Mm -hmm. thinking, Oh my God, this is going to be the worst thing ever. And it worked out. So this is a victory so far, so far. I don't want to you know do a victory lap yet, but this is a victory for all of us here that it wasn't as bad in this area as it had been in New York and as as you said in Italy. As and well. let's not forget that Illinois is following the White House guidelines uh, for how to reopen, and is was one of the first states to actually meet all of the criteria to reopen. Uh, they're doing it in stages. Some people argue that the you know, this, the pace of reopening should be accelerated because there are other very real costs associated yeah. with, with with the shutdown. But as we're seeing in Arizona, Texas, and some other states that have now been open for a while, they are seeing their COVID cases increase. 
once right. again. And they, so and they didn't have, and some of them. I mean, Texas did actually. Texas has it now is in encountering a second wave, but Arizona. Florida, I guess you could argue it's a second wave, but not that much. Florida was actually spared in the first wave, essentially, but they're seeing their numbers start to go up. And, yes, that is happening. And I think people also, we talked to a doctor from Northwestern earlier today about COVID fatigue and the idea that people think, well, this is over and I just got to get out. And those are states that didn't have huge numbers. We've had larger numbers. There's not herd immunity. I don't want people to stop listen to this and think that that's what i'm saying but what we have had here has been a run through and i think that enough of the listeners here who experience this in the in chicago and in the collar counties in cook county and the collar counties they all get that you know what was going on here and and it's and, and people i think by and large have been fairly safe however i will say this and we were just talking about this before you came on ben you know, I don't know where Lori Lightfoot is ultimately going to be on this. I want the I want the stop between this Lopez alderman and this Lightfoot mayor. I want that st- that crap stop. And when Lopez goes on Laura Ingram's show, like that's going to help in some way, <laughs> shape, or form. He's he, you know he's a little naive about that. It but. was interesting to see. Uh, I believe it was Breitbart, Gateway Pundit, and some of the other um, you know pretty right wing publications jumped all over that spat. Yeah. Showing, you know, like, oh, look, there's a civil war unfolding in Chicago. Yeah. Right. Well, because uh, they want to stoke it. Right. They want to yeah. fight, 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 fight between th- these folks. We and we we are the citizens here in this city. We do not want them to fight, 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 fight. We want them to actually get along and figure this out. And we also do not want to have this. People are trying to, like, gin up this race war thing you're seeing that in also this crazy websites mm-hmm. you know this gin war there this uh, race war between uh mexicans and blacks and stuff like that not just in chicago but around the country like, whoa, whoa 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 you know like and stop and think about who's behind that right who would be who, behind that who benefits who benefits right. from that hey real quickly speaking of Vladimir. Uh, yes the, the rioting uh, and whatnot that we had here the looting uh, we've been looking into, you know, this claim from President Trump that Antifa is to blame for violent protests, partially to blame for violent protests across the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, we checked uh, of the 15 cases that federal prosecutors have made in the Northern District of Illinois. Uh, in none of those criminal complaints, is there an allegation that those 15 people were directly connected to Antifa? And Chicago police tell us of the more than 2,200 arrests they made for civil unrest and looting. Um, they had not determined any significant link, links to that group that the president has called domestic terrorists. Now, let's be clear. That's not to say there weren't, you know, Antifa sympathizers or members or, or whatnot right, right, who were right, right. engaging sure. in some of this. Yeah. It's just to say um, the president's own Justice Department did not cite that in their criminal complaints against the 15 people they've charged here and Chicago police have not pointed that out is hey look look at this guy's you know Twitter feed you know he says he's Antifa and now we you know catch him bombing someplace or throwing Molotov cocktails or whatnot so yeah. not to say they weren't involved in it somehow but it's I think it's important to look at uh, what the rhetoric is and then uh, what the career prosecutors and cops who are making these cases uh, actually put in their in their charging documents. Right. And Tifa has been a real impact, has had a real impact going back to what was it, the G7 in Seattle, mm-hmm. and then the G20 here, NATO, NATO here. Yep. Um, I mean, those, the, when you talk to people who were involved both locally and federally and, and in those crowd control situations, they knew where Antifa was. I, I have not, and to the people I've talked to, and I know you do this as well, I have not heard a lot of connection to Antifa here. I know that that's a good political battle cry. It's something that get every, gets everybody's attention and creates a, a you know bad guy, right? Mm-hmm. A boogeyman for all of this. That I don't think in Chicago. I can't speak to anywhere else, but I know in Chicago mm-hmm. that is not yet on the radar of the the county, city, federal officials here that that you and I talked to. And so we'll see. They've got some violent sympathizers with Antifa, so they're sure. worth watching, no doubt. But yeah. that's that's what the facts of the cases that have been presented so far tell right. us. And one of the things that was very interesting is that uh, they kind of knew uh, here that there was going to be a diminution of, of violence from Saturday to Sunday. You know, it's not a surprise that they dropped the bridges, 
they lowered the bridges on Sunday and they opened up everything on Sunday and then the mayor opened up the parks, the interior parks and all of that. It was like it was like a light switch almost. Not like a dimmer. It was like a very fast move on the dimmer. You know people who do that? They just they, they mm-hmm. just throw the dimmer up as opposed to just going slow. Well, that's what the mayor did on Sunday and there's very good reason for that because there was intelligence that was telling them that those professionals who were trying to engage in riling people up had moved on. Yep. And so that is an important thing and that's and it's not necessarily Antifa, but there's other Groups as well that they get involved in that. It's it. It's this is you know a like in an alderman always said to me. In Chicago, not even fishing is on the square, <laughs> and that tells you everything you need to know, which is that what you think you see, you know, you're not seeing. Yeah. And there's a lot of other things that are going on behind the scenes, and that's why we have such great conspiracy theories in Chicago. Most of them are true. <laughs> ben, we will see you tonight. Are we going to see you tonight? Yes, in this, uh, that piece will be on tonight at nine o'clock, looking nine at o'clock. COVID costs. Okay. Thank you, Ben. Appreciate it. We've got the news from the Northwestern Medicine Newsroom. Here's Kim Gordon. 71 degrees at 531. Good afternoon. I'm Kim Gordon. The news is sponsored by AppleChevy.com. We have that we'll have the latest coronavirus numbers in Illinois coming up. No more waving of the Confederate flag at NASCAR events. That symbol has been banned. And in business, the Fed announcing no change in interest rates. WGN Traffic, here's Lauren Lapka. A crash on I-80 West is blocking the right lane at LaGrange Road, backing things up to Harlem right now. There's also an accident outbound on the Kennedy. That's in the left lane at Central. Traffic is heavy from Montrose. It's 23 minutes to O'Hare, also 23 back out. Out on the, or out on the Eisenhower, it's 40 to 390 and 37 into the circles. Stevenson's looking good. And outbound Dan Ryan is congested around the Skyway. It's 17 minutes to 95th and no delay. Inbound. I'm Lauren Lapka from the IDOT Traffic Center, reminding you to drive responsibly. It really is a matter of life or death. The news is next, but first, Tom Skilling's forecast from the Permaseal Weather Center. Tonight, very windy. A period of showers developed this evening. Then clouds scatter, turning cooler and noticeably less humid, a low of 58. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, breezy, warm, a high of 78. Friday, sunshine with some mixed clouds during the afternoon and evening. Cooler winds off Lake Michigan with a high of 66. Another 78 deaths from COVID-19 in Illinois. WGN Steve Bertrand has the latest numbers. Of the 78 deaths, all but 14 were in Chicago. Chicago's Northeast Illinois region. There were 625 new cases confirmed. Within the past 24 hours, laboratories have reported more than 20,000 tests for a total of 1.1 million. The preliminary seven-day statewide positivity rate is at 4%. Steve Bertrand, WGN News. The Cook County Medical Examiner has confirmed a nine-month-old boy who died in March died as a result of the coronavirus. Joseph Miles died from pneumonia due to COVID-19 and another coronavirus. He's the youngest person to die in Cook County. Parts of Navy Pier reopened today. That includes restaurants, outdoor vendors, and some boats. WGN's Shannon Halligan has more. For those who visit Navy Pier, everyone will be required to wear a mask at all times, except when dining. Management will be monitoring how many people are there at a time to prevent going over capacity. The Ferris Wheel and other rides remain closed, as well as the Chicago Children's Museum and the Shakespeare Theater. President Trump not backing down from a tweet suggesting a 75-year-old man may have staged his fall and bleeding ear injury when pushed by New York police in Buffalo. The president's tweet repeated a conspiracy theory claiming a 75-year-old pushed and injured by police, quote, fell harder than he was pushed and that he was part of Antifa. There are no public facts that back that claim. The president was asking questions um, about an interaction in a video clip he saw, and the president has the right to ask those questions. Spokesperson Kaylee McEnany saying the president thinks most police officers do a great job. Andy Field, ABC News, Washington. Mayor Lightfoot is responding to the release of a tape in which he's heard swearing at Alderman Raymond Lopez and he was swearing back. The heated exchange was over the city's response to protests and looting. One individual who decided to illegally tape a conversation that was intended to be a private conversation among all of us. Shame on him. Shame on him. She wouldn't name the alderman who released the recording, but said it was part of an hour and a half long emotional conversation. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell is throwing cold water on raising interest rates. We're not thinking about raising rates. We're not even thinking about thinking about raising rates. That comes after an announcement. The Fed is keeping interest rates at zero or near zero. The target range will remain between zero to 0.25 percent. 
And the first batches of mosquitoes have tested positive for West Nile virus in Illinois. The Department of Public Health says the batches were discovered in River Forest in Evanston. No human cases have been reported so far this year. Last year, there were 28 human cases, including one death. And now WGN Sports, here's Andy Mazur. NASCAR has banned the Confederate flag from all events and properties. NASCAR is saying the Confederate flag, quotes, runs contrary to our commitment to providing a welcoming and inclusive atmosphere for all fans, our competitors, and our industry, end quote. In 2015, NASCAR tried to ban the flying of the flag at racetracks, but it was a proposal that was too broad to enforce and one that angered NASCAR's core Southern-based fan base. Bubba Wallace, the only black driver on the circuit, calls it a symbol of slavery and racism. He's going to be racing tonight in Virginia in a car honoring Black Lives Matter. Several Blackhawks players return to the Fifth Third Arena today for a voluntary workouts as the NHL opened Phase 2 of its return to play plan this week. Patrick Kane, Alex Debrinkit, Alex Nylander, and Malcolm Subban among those that showed up today. The Hawks will be the 12th seed in the Western Conference when the playoffs begin next month. The players in baseball made a counterproposal to the owners today, offering up an 89-game schedule with full prorated pay. This a day after MLB cut its proposed schedule to 76 games, but with only 75% of prorated pay. Each side, though, in agreement on an expanded playoff featuring as many as 16 teams. Baseball's amateur draft will get underway at around 6 o'clock Chicago time. This year's draft is five rounds down from 40. The White Sox will suck 11th. The Cubs add number 16. Detroit has the overall pick at number one. Former Loyola Ramblers guard Marcus Towns has re-signed to play in Spain for a second straight season. Towns, of course, helped lead the Ramblers to back-to-back MVC titles and the Final Four in 2018. On the home of the Blackhawks, Northwestern Wildcats and White Sox baseball, Andy Mazur, WGN Sports. Your money on WGN. The Dow closed down 282 points today. NASDAQ up 66. The S&P 500 down 17 points. Gold up today. Oil up two cents at $38.96. And the VIX at the CBOE unchanged. I'm Kim Gordon on Chicago's very own 720 WGN. Attention business owners. With the coronavirus and so many other contaminants polluting our air, the challenges of staying healthy and productive can feel overwhelming. Millhouse Engineering and Construction solves problems that improve communities everywhere. They use a special fog sanitization to effectively sanitize against the coronavirus. Maximize the productivity of your staff with peace of mind. You'll know you've taken precautions to provide a healthy work environment. Millhouse's sanitization fogging is the same process recently adopted by the major airlines. It filters the air with a three-stage HEPA filtration system and uses a hospital grade EPA registered solution for fogging. Unlike other processes, their solution doesn't use bleach or leave a toxic residue. Their sanitizing fog combats contaminants in the air and on hard, soft and porous surfaces. To sanitize the air against coronavirus and other contaminants in your office, call Millhouse Engineering right now for a consultation at 855-621-0001. That's 855-621-0001 or millhouseinc.com. With thousands of locally owned Napa stores across the nation, chances are that wherever you call home, we do too. So as America starts opening back up for business, and as more of us start getting back out there again, we'll be in big cities, small towns, and everywhere in between, doing what we've always done to help keep our local communities moving forward. So whether you stop by a Napa Auto Parts store, Auto Care Center, or visit us at Napa Online, you can count on Napa Know How. So we've been kind of talking about this for the last couple of days. Coming up with suggestions. Peter Greenberg joins us every week here. We talk about what people are going to go do for the weekend. Peter Greenberg is, of course, a travel expert. and Or for the for the summer, if you want to take your summer vacation, what are we going to do? Are we going to fly? You're not going to fly a little bit later on. We're going to have Alex Stone join us and talk about the changes in flying. The United Airlines announced its new boarding procedures concerning COVID-19. So uh, people want to get back out. They want to get on the road. Why, maybe this summer of 2020 shouldn't be completely lost. And then I read this story about RVs. That's the big deal. People trying to get RVs, whether rent them, because most people don't own them, but you'd be surprised how many people actually do. We'll get to that in a second. But is it better to take your own bed and toilet with you wherever you go on the road? That is the question. And Matthew Wagner is with us, Executive Vice President of Camping World and Gander RV and Outdoors. That's in Lincolnshire. Location throughout the Midwest, by the way. But it is based right here in the Chicago metropolitan area. And uh, let us now discuss Matthew. First of all, surprise, I was amazed to find that 11% of U.S. households uh, 
have that are headed by 35 to 54 year olds I, I know that's a very specific demographic have an rv that's that's pretty amazing now is an rv like the let's just define that first is that the one you is that include the ones you drag behind as well as the ones you drive Thank you first for having me on the show, but just to more clearly define all the different segments of RVs, you have what's largely based is the motorized, which Mm -hmm. has an engine, which you'd actually Mm -hmm. drive with a steering wheel, and then you have what's called a towable or a tow behind, depending upon what sort of jargon you'd like to utilize. And within those two broader segments, there's a number of subclasses. Within motorized, you've got a large Class A bus, which you kind of equate as like a tour bus, which are obviously on the higher end spectrum and much more expensive. And on the motorized side, you have a Class C with that little cab over the uh, overall truck area. And within the towable segment, that's a far greater portion of the overall RV space. You have travel trailers and fifth wheels. Fifth wheels kind of go over the bed of a truck, and then the travel trailer can be towed by an SUV, a hybrid, uh, any sort of truck, really anything with a hitch. And if you could tow something as heavy as, say, 10,000 pounds, uh, or, in some cases, if your tow vehicle can only handle 1,200 pounds, there's an RV for you. Okay. Well, that's a very excellent sales pitch, sir. Let's, though, figure out if people are doing this more now because of COVID-19. Are they? So we certainly have seen uh, more entrants into the marketplace that do not have a trade-in. So, in other words, the best way we could assess it is, if there's more consumers coming into the marketplace that have a trade when they're buying a new RV. And what we have seen over the past few months is that that percentage has declined a little bit compared to traditional highs or traditional median averages. Mm -hmm. So I think you can conclude that, yes, there has been greater interest in the RV lifestyle. And that's been further cemented by some Google analytics to suggest that there's even more individuals searching for something as simple as RVs for sale near me or RVs to rent near me. Yeah. Now, RVs as a rental versus a sales thing, for a long time, the industry moved from renting RVs to selling them. And now we're going back toward renting them? Well, there's not really hard industry data to suggest uh, how much is being, our rentals actually being utilized. Where I could tell you as a company, we did have a rental company that we operated a number of years ago. And there's a greater portion of rentals attributed to people coming in from overseas into the U.S. compared to actual domestic rentals. Now, those trends could change from year to year. But I can tell you from the RV retail sales perspective, those sales have consistently grown over the past three decades, with exception to a couple of hiccup periods here and there around 2001 and 2009. And uh, it went slightly backwards in terms of retail sales in 2018. And what you're starting to see here is a little bit of a resurgence now um, in 2020. So I think the retail sales portion uh, has been a larger portion of the overall marketplace where people realize this is a domicile on wheels. I'd almost rather own my own domicile, my own home, as opposed to renting another one that people could have utilized, slept in, and perhaps utilized that restroom. Right. But my guess is that this year specifically, because 2020 has its own meme now. 2020 people hate 2020 and there's really a lot of good reasons to hate 2020 but they want to make they want to get something out of this summer and i'm sure there's a lot of people especially here in the chicago metropolitan area the upper midwest that that these are 100 days you don't want to miss and if you want to travel this is a good way to do it with your family and then you don't have to get into a hotel room you don't have to worry about you know that all the other things that are incumbent upon not being in your own safe space if you will so are, is it easy to help people who might want to do this? How would you find an RV to rent? There's a number of large national chains like Cruise America, El Monte, uh, Road Bear that do a fantastic job of maintaining their RVs, turning over their RVs so they always have fresh inventory. There's a few other platforms out there like peer-to-peer websites like an RV Share or Outdoorsy where they'll match up consumers that own RVs with consumers that are looking to temporarily rent RVs. And Outdoorsy and RV share nothing more than a marketplace to help just match those individuals up. We do not participate as Camp World or Gander in either of those platforms, but there certainly are those options out there for the overall yeah. outdoor enthusiast or RVer. Yeah. All right, hold on one second. I want to get a, an idea of what all of this costs on the other side. And then your phone calls at 312-981-7200. Maybe you're an RVer. Maybe you're, maybe you're like an RV, like, 
the biggest fan of all times. So I'd like to hear if this actually works. It's kind of interesting. I don't know how and how easy are they to drive, especially if you got the one with the big steering wheel. Does that work? Three one two nine eight one seventy two hundred on the other side because I got to figure out something for the summer, right? Got to do something. Lauren Lapka will tell us what's happening on the roadways right now. And the RV, by the way, I do from time to time hear about that rolling over somewhere. So I just want... <laughs> Thankfully, none of that right now. Okay, good. All right, good. In fact, uh, no reports of RVs anywhere on the road around here. But, you know, I don't think I'm going to know about that unless it's an accident. But there are a handful of accidents out there involving smaller vehicles. There's one in Downers Grove at Maple and Veterans Memorial, another in Wheaton at Butterfield and Naperville Road, and another in Niles at Gulf and Greenwood. Also seeing a crash in Bloomingdale at Lake and Bloomingdale Road. And on the northwest side, traffic signals are flashing red at Kimball, north of Belmont. I'm Lauren Lapka from the IDOT Traffic Center, reminding you to drive responsibly. It really is a matter of life or death. We can beat them all. Service to a green tea. Hi, this is Tonya Kuri of Green Tea Windows. Increase the beauty and value of your home with our, our exceptional, energy-efficient, EPA-certified windows. They're made here in the U.S. with a lifetime warranty. And our installers have a minimum seven years experience. And listen to this. Our windows have the newest technology, self-cleaning glass. Yes, our special glass actually cleans itself. Dirt, dust, and water just rolls right off. Service to a green tea. Green tea can beat any window offer. Right now, buy one window, get the second window for $1. Yes, buy one window, get the second window for just $1. Plus, 0% financing is available. Call us now for details and a free estimate. Call 800-5-GREEN-TEA. Green Tea tea Services, service to a green tea. 800-5-GREEN-TEA. 800-5-GREEN-TEA or greenteaservices.com. Secretary of State facilities are now open, but until July 31st, only new drivers and those with expired licenses and IDs will be served. Vehicle stickers can also be renewed. There's no need to rush in. All expiration dates have been extended, and the Real ID deadline is now October 2021. Safety measures, including social distancing, are in place, so please be patient. Avoid lines by renewing online or by phone. For more information, visit CyberDriveIllinois.com. Two years from now, got any plans? I don't. But two-year contracts make you plan around them anyway. What's even happening tomorrow? At WOW, we give contracts the modern touch by not having them. With us, not only do you get our super fast Internet 200 for a ridiculously low $44.99 a month, but you'll also get safe, simple, contact-free installation. Sign up today at Huawei.com. Wow. Limited offer for new customers with auto pay and paperless billing, equipment taxes, and fees extra. Offer subject to change. Restrictions and terms apply. (laughs) Talking about the RV world. Because I'm interested. I think that a lot of people are this summer thinking, well, if you're going to hit the road, why not do it safe, like in your own RV so you can be, you know, bring your bed and your toilet and everything with you. And so we've got Matt Wagner with us. And Matt is an expert in this, executive vice president of Camping World and Gander RV and Outdoors based in Lincolnshire, locations throughout the Midwest. But uh, the rvcampingworld.com by the way rv.campingworld.com is the uh, website for that so we're talking about renting and buying let's just uh, talk about price because if we're going to do this we got to know what we're getting into if people want to rent an rv we'll get to the price of buying in a moment here but if they want to rent an rv for the summer because it's 2020 where does it start where does it end the most inexpensive daily rental rate of which I'm aware is about 200 bucks a day, which at first glance, it sounds somewhat high given that you could buy, get into some hotel rooms for a lot less than that. But I'd ask that you also consider when you're renting an RV that you can cook for yourself. You don't have to worry about necessarily going to any of these other extracurricular activities of uh, beyond the entertainment. You're going to these national parks to entertain yourself. And furthermore, you don't have to worry about the cost of airfare to get to wherever you're right. going. It's just gas. When you look at the entire summation, it's not a bad deal economically. Yeah. Is that one of those ones that you trail behind you, or would you be able to drive one for 200 bucks a day? That would be one to drive for 200 bucks a day. Wow. I'm unaware of too many instances where you'd actually be able to rent one um, from like one of the major rental companies where you'd be able to tow behind. They're just not as comfortable doing that. However, a peer-to-peer type of environment, 
you could probably figure out an owner of a travel trailer for even perhaps a little bit less than that on a daily rate. So the guys who own those don't want to rent them because they're trickier to drive? Would that, that be the issue? Well, you'd have to have a tow vehicle that would have a high enough tow rating to be able to tow it themselves. So oftentimes an owner of a travel trailer would feel more comfortable towing them their own vehicle, knowing what they can and can't tow, versus allowing someone else to use their own truck to tow that might not be rated for the weight of that trailer. So it's All more right. of just the liability. All right. So, uh, and so like a fancy tour busy kind of thing, how much are those a day? Well, oh, goodness, depends upon uh, how fancy you get. A number of them uh, could be worth many millions of dollars. So, I mean, you could be upwards of, heck, $5,000 a day. Oh, um, but some of those, uh, right, depending upon, <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> depending upon uh, how economic you'd like to be, find a Class A gas that's an entry-level Class A gas with still kind of that tour bus look for about four or 500 bucks a day. See, now the thing is, I would like to find a uh, failed musician who owns his own tour bus. That's what you need. You need a guy whose his career has just That's taken right. a, a pooper, and then you can like try to get a, a hold of his thing for cheap, because I know that that, that does happen. All right, and th- now, now with, the, with the campers, the, you know, the drive-in campers, I, we're going to take some phone calls here, 312-981-7200, but I, with, with, with the bathroom situation, I mean, how do you, what's, what, what, now what, you have to go clean that out all the time. What happens there? So every RV has holding tanks that could hold either fresh water, sewage, or gray water. Gray water being the discards of like the water that you use to to actually wash your hands. So when uh, you do get to a point where your holding tanks have filled up with either gray water or sewage, you have to uh, utilize a dump station that's oftentimes at campsites. Every campsite should have a dump station, if not actually on the actual pad where you'd park your RV. And just about every RV dealership offers free services to help with that. And it's really a lot simpler process than you'd think, where there's kits that are very inexpensive, where you would just attach it to the actual holding tanks and you flush the black tank with the sewage first and then the gray tank next. Yeah, I might be out again now. Matt, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Matt Wagner, Executive Vice President of Camping World and Gander RV and Outdoors based in Lincolnshire. Thank you very much for your expertise. Let's talk to some people here who actually have done this. Paul, you're on WGN. Go ahead, Paul. Several years ago, I rented an RV. Uh, there's a large RV dealer along uh, 55 somewhere in Bolingbrook. And we rented one for a week and drove up the Mississippi River. There are lots of campgrounds. Um, on, on the interstates, many of the interstates have, um, places where you can dump the tanks and it was, it was a blast. <laughs> now, wait a little, as, as we will all recall, uh, from our friend Dave Matthews, uh, that uh, you can just dump the tank if you want, you know, hitting a button right over the Chicago river. If you, if you really were in, um, interested in doing it, you're not supposed yeah. to do that. I don't think. All right. Now, how much did that cost you? I'm going to say and this was probably ten years ago. I'm saying, I'm going to say it probably cost me, I don't know, four or five hundred dollars for for a week. Wow, that's say, I'm, I'm sure that's more expensive now. But um, yeah, and we did the same thing in California and drove up the coast all the way to Oregon, and it was a blast. Now, Beautiful. how many people were in the RV with you? Six. Oh, wow! And at night, everybody like everybody slept in the RV. The six people, and then you had the one bathroom and the whole thing. Oh yeah, there's, and everybody was cool. There's, yeah, there's probably room for eight. Oh man, that's it. Does that feels like it's closer quarters though? I mean, even if it's like everybody lives in the same house and they're used to it, it just I, there's something about that. So it worked out though. I mean, everybody loved it and it was great. And and did oh, you, yeah. you you feel like you obviously you saved money because you didn't have to have hotel rooms and stuff like that. And you're on the right. road for more than a week. Huh. Right. We uh, we went fishing. We went along the Mississippi River. There's a lot of campgrounds along there, uh, right right on the river. And we went fishing. We we had uh, a little grill and we grilled uh, fresh fish and and steaks and it was a blast. All right. Okay. What about the okay uh, okay What about the campgrounds themselves? Those when you drive by them, they freak me out. Was that okay? Yeah, they were fine. All I right. think it was. In those days, I think it was, I don't know, five or six bucks a night for the campground. <laughs> uh, they had, they had uh, you know, they had bathrooms. And I, if I remember right, they had showers. 
And so, um, you know, it was it was good. It was a good right. time. All right, Paul, you have damn near sold me. Not 100%, but damn near sold me. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Joe, you're on WGN. Go ahead, Joe. Yeah, hey, I've had um, fifth wheels, uh, motorhome. Uh, it's gotten much easier now to have a motorhome because uh, you don't have to tow a car behind you. You can call up your uh, you know, budget or whatever, rent a car, and I'll deliver a, a car to your site. I used to go to Mount Rushmore or Sturgis on a regular basis, and, and they used to bring me a rental car right to my site. Oh, so you could go yeah. somewhere else so you didn't have to, like, because you, you can't drive the motor home everywhere. So that, that would right. be a, a way to get, you know, you get a little four door or whatever that would just, that you could. I always wonder about that. And sometimes you see the cars being towed by the motor home or motorcycles people use or mopeds or things like that, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep, yep, but it's uh, it's much better now, uh, and uh, like I belong to like this good Sam Club thing, and, and they have preferred campsites and with the showers and uh, you know the hookups. Uh, you can have a full hookup uh, with the you know your sewer and water. You don't have to mess with the tanks. You can hook the sewage line right into the in the campground, as mm -hmm. long as 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 well as your uh, electricity, and also you can hook up your cable for your cable TV. And if you rent a good enough unit, you have all that stuff right there. You don't have to worry about dumping anything. And you it's, rent the the cable TV f per night. Is that how that works? No, it's, it's a lot of it's included in in the stay. So you know, like oh. uh, right now, it's 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 up to about maybe forty five, fifty bucks a night. And then if hmm. you belong to like you know a good Sam or something, you get they knock ten bucks off. You know, but the showers and all that are there, and uh, they have playgrounds and. You know, dog walking facilities. It's it's pretty good. It's it's pretty good. It's it's changed a lot. I've been doing it for over twenty five years, and you know, um, yeah, I'm jonesing for it. But you know, this year we're gonna hold off. I think until next year. So. Well, see, but I think the people who would normally go to hotels and fly and all that on their summer vacation are thinking about this this year. So I'm just trying to figure out if that makes any kind of sense. Joe, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Sounds you bet, uh, well. Man. I'm I'm about halfway sold. Not 100 percent sold, but I'm halfway sold. But I do like the idea of driving the thing. Yeah, it seems like that would be kind of fun, like flying a plane. All right, we have got Dr. Duffy, our therapist, is going to be joining us coming up in the six o'clock hour, and how to have tough conversations with your parents. Very interesting coming your way. But first, we've got news from Northwestern Medicine Newsroom in two. Is there a jobless college grad in your life? We talked to an expert from the world's largest business networking organization about what steps to take next. Plus, stress, gut health, and keeping your immunity up as you venture outside and back to work. Tonight at 7 with me, G, into the night. If you've got knee pain, go to the Joint Relief Institute. Even now, the Joint Relief Institute is seeing patients regularly. This quick, pain-free, non-surgical procedure is not only allowed, it's always been something to consider before or instead of knee replacement. So what do you know? Maybe you could go for that socially distanced walk right now. Because here's what they do at the Joint Relief Institute. With digital imaging, they see where your knee has deteriorated. They put a lubricant into that precise spot. They're expert at this, you know. It's all they do. And when you walk in, you'll be greeted by a positive, happy, encouraging group of people because they know you're going to walk out feeling better. But first, you got to walk in. And again, they are seeing patients. Online, find them at JointReliefInstitute.com. In person, they're in Oak Brook and Orland Park. On the phone, same phone number for both locations, 708-888-0000, 708-888-0000, as in zero pain. Things are looking up, Chicagoland. Lindemann Chimney Heating and Cooling represents the safest, best-trained staff in the industry. For 50 years, they've been making beautiful homes like yours safe and sound. Book at CleanFireplace.com. For 84 years, APT has served our community by offering products and services for life's everyday tasks. From preparing family meals to staying in touch with loved ones, they're committed to providing products and services for their customers. And they're here for you over the phone, online, or with limited in-store hours. Their curbside pickup and same-day doorstop delivery are safe, convenient options for quickly getting the things you need. APT. They're here to help. My name is David Hochberg, host of Home Sweet Home Chicago. I am inviting you to join us Saturday at 10 a.m. to learn about real estate, mortgages, waterproofing your basement, leveling your sidewalk and driveway, and getting rid of bugs. This weekend's guests are Janelle Iaccino, 
of Rose Pest Solutions, Roy Spencer of Permaseal, and Mega Pros Joe of Mega Pros Home Improvement. Please visit WGNDavid.com to download podcasts of previous shows and to submit your questions for our expert. Join us this Saturday at 10 a.m. for Home Sweet Home Chicago. Serving the great Midwest from Chicago, this is WGN at AM 720 on your radio and on smart devices anywhere just by saying, play WGN radio on TuneIn. WGN Chicago. A Nexstar Media Group station. 71 degrees at 6 o'clock. Good evening. I'm Kim Gordon. The news is sponsored by Permaseal Basement Systems. Chicago's FOP president says members will be disciplined if they support protesters. We'll have Mayor Lightfoot's reaction coming up. No Confederate flags allowed at NASCAR events anymore. That decision came today. And in business, the Treasury Secretary is weighing who will get help in the next coronavirus relief package. WGN Traffic, here's Lauren Lapka. And this report is sponsored by AP Info. An accident northbound on the Tri-State is blocking the right lane at the Stevenson. Also seeing a crash westbound on Reagan Memorial, blocking two left lanes at Winfield. Traffic inbound on the Kennedy is a bit heavy from Division. It's 23 minutes from O'Hare and 20 back out. Both sides of the Eisenhower between 390 and the Circle are, are just 27 minutes. Up on Stevenson, it's a half hour to Veterans Memorial. Inbound side is looking good and no issues on the Dan Ryan. And a reminder that on I-65 North, the entrance ramp at 109th is closed for road work until June 16th. Ground Game is the latest podcast from the Associated Press. Hosted by AP's Julie Pace, Ground Game discusses election strategy all through primary season. Download it wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Lauren Lapka from the IDOT Traffic Center, reminding you to drive responsibly. It really is a matter of life or death. The news is next, but first, the WGN forecast. Here's meteorologist Demetrius Ivory. Another cloudy night with showers and thunderstorms possible. The low temperature down to 60. Tomorrow's high temperature, though, into the upper 70s and low 80s, mostly sunny there, and an extended stretch of sunshine comes our way that will carry us through the weekend. No rain. Friday's high temperature in the upper 70s. On Saturday, we're in the mid to upper 60s, and Sunday, we climb to nearly 80 degrees. I'm WGN meteorologist Demetrius Ivory. Don't expect to see Chicago police taking a knee or marching with protesters. President John Catanzara tells WGN's Bob Surratt. I've made it very clear to the members of Lodge 7 that that has no place for our members. That is contradicting to our Constitution as a lodge. He says members face discipline and could even be expelled if found siding with protesters while in uniform. Mayor Lightfoot was asked about the FOP president's comments. I don't really think that we should credit um, those kinds of really unfortunate um, comments, and I'm not going to um, dignify them with any further response. You can hear the interview with the FOP president on our website at WGNRadio.com. A new report by the city's inspector general criticizes the Chicago Police Department's record keeping. Says the department routinely has difficulty finding records when they're requested by prosecutors for lawsuits or by those seeking records through a Freedom of Information Act request. Claims the department doesn't currently have an efficient way to track all of the records it's required to maintain and that that is threatening people's right to a fair trial. The IG's office says top CPD brass agree with many of the report's findings and that they're working to improve. Vic Vaughn, WGN News. President Trump is getting ready to hit the campaign trail soon. The first one in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, we're going to be coming into Florida, do a big one in Florida, a big one in Texas, uh, going to Arizona, we're going to North Carolina at the appropriate time. The president today also criticized North Carolina Governor Roy Cooper and accused him of not giving an inch about crowd capacities for the Republican National Convention in late August. Trump promised an announcement soon about relocating the convention to another city. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin says the U.S. economy will need more help to recover from the recession, but the next round of support should be more targeted to the hardest hit parts of the economy. Testifying before the Senate Small Business Committee today, he says the administration planned to spend the next 30 days looking at what measures should go into the next bill. University of Illinois campuses in Chicago and Springfield won't require applicants for 2021 to take the ACT or SAT because of the pandemic disrupting the admissions process. U of I trustees approved the proposal this afternoon. The change will apply only to incoming freshmen at UIC and UIS who want to enroll in the fall of 2021. A man who punched and kicked a special needs grocery store bagger in Bartlett was sentenced to two years in prison today. 51-year-old Bruce Mirabella of Bartlett was found guilty of 
a Class 3 felony in March. Mirabella, who was convicted of reckless homicide in the 90s, will be eligible for parole after serving half his sentence. And now WGN Sports, here's Andy Mazur. NASCAR won't be waving the Confederate flag anymore. It's been banned from all races and properties as of today. Move coming two days after NASCAR's only black driver said there was no place for the flag in the sport. Bubba Wallace calls it a symbol of slavery and racism. He'll be racing tonight in Virginia in a car honoring Black Lives Matter. Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred said there is a 100% chance of big league ball this year. Major League Baseball will make another proposal to the Players Union Friday. Manfred vowed to order opening day if an agreement is not reached. The Players Association made its second proposal yesterday asking for an 89-game regular season and 100% of prorated salaries. The MLB draft is about to get underway. The Tigers will make the first selection of the night. White Sox are on the board at number 11. The Cubs pick at number 16. Just five rounds of the draft this year, down from the usual 40. Sounds of hockey were in the air on the west side today as several Blackhawks players returned to Fifth Third Arena for voluntary workouts as the NHL opened Phase 2 of the return to play program this week. Patrick Kane and Alex Dabrinkin among those showing up today. Blackhawks getting ready for the playoffs. They'll be 12th in the Western, in the Western Conference, that is, when the playoffs begin next month. And the PGA Tour has some new policies in place when it gets back underway tomorrow after a three-month layoff at the Charles Schwab Challenge. Among them, testing players and caddies for COVID-19 and wiping off flax sticks and rakes. The first big result coming today, though, when the tour said no one has tested positive for the virus. On the home of the Blackhawks, Northwestern Wildcats and White Sox baseball, Andy Mazur, WGN Sports. Your money on WGN. The Dow closed down 282 points today. NASDAQ up 66. The S&P 500 down 17. I'm Kim Gordon on Chicago's very own 720 WGN. With over 31,000 associates on the front lines, Jewel Osco has superheroes wearing everything from deli aprons and tech coats to bright orange safety vests. We take great pride in the way Jewel Osco people stepped up to provide essential services during these challenging times. Coming September 1st to WGN America, News Nation, originating from Chicago, live every night in primetime. Your news, your nation. Only on WGN America. He's America's greatest late night talk show host. Johnny. With America's best late night show. Watch classic Johnny Carson weeknights at 9 on Antenna TV. Watch on 9.2 or check your cable listing. Johnny Carson on Antenna TV. Your home is your castle, your refuge, your safe place. Our job at 1-800-GOT-JUNK is to make junk disappear. And we're good at it. Your home will feel bigger. And cleaner. And you'll feel happier. We promise. Give us a call. Or go to our website. And your junk will magically disappear as our truck drives past your home. Well, almost. We'll be in and out before you can blink. And our gloved professionals touch nothing except the things you want to disappear. Call 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Or visit 1-800-GOT-JUNK.COM. All right, I'll just make this my turn. There we go. Uh, my shrink is on the phone. Dr. John Duffy is with us, and he handles all of, uh, well, at least my on-air mental breakdowns. And uh, thank you, John. It's always a, a pleasure to have you with us. And we've been trying to, you know, obviously in a serious way, help families for the last number of months get through the COVID-19, whether you're having to, to teach your kids at home or manage stress, manage fear amongst your kids or especially your teenagers. And uh, now I want to I want to turn the tables a little bit today, John, because I think that uh, families are struggling with a couple of things. We talked about all the fear around COVID-19 and how do you address this and how do you keep people safe and make sure that everybody's behavior is, is safe, right? You know, the social distancing and all the rest of the stuff that it's hard for people to get to. And now we have the added stress of the of the strife that has hit and where that all goes now it does appear and i think thankfully so that we are going to be able to move a little bit beyond that issue for the next a few weeks i hope and we're having what appear to be moderate conversations on uh, whether they're governmental conversations or even the, the the protests i mean they seem to have settled down here and maybe this turns into a, a long and thoughtful conversation. That is my hope for all of it. However, what I am finding and hearing reported back is that there are families that are having trouble generationally dealing with this because you may have parents who have kids who are, you know, certainly 
in in one camp here of looking at what they're seeing on television, especially teenage kids, and thinking, oh, my God, this is part of the injustice of America, injustice of society, and getting pretty emotional about it. And you may have parents who are, you know, maybe somewhat partisan to that, but then there's grandparents who are looking at it completely differently. And how do Absolutely. you... Absolutely, yeah. How do you create a bridge there yeah i think um we are all forced into positions where we need to become makeshift therapists so you know giving a brief lesson on how best to navigate these kind of pretty difficult conversations in the wake of the strife and i share that idea with you that i hope we're on the back end of the worst of that but in families it's happening and you're absolutely right between generations so the first thing we have to do as abhorrent as this is for some of us, is acknowledge and validate the point of view of the person in another generation we're talking to, whether that is your child, your parents, your grandparent, or your grandchild. Um, That is hard to do. You know, like we go, I go through years of training to get to the point where I'm like, let me understand exactly what you're saying and what it's derivative of. And I think that's where understanding comes from. And that's the first place we need to get to is I understand your point of view and I understand where it comes from. And I can, I can acknowledge and validate that that makes sense to me. I don't necessarily agree with it, but that makes sense to me because none of us are really going to be open to listening to somebody from another generation, be they older or younger, if we don't feel like they're willing to listen to us. So that I think is the first step. And then I think it's okay to share your own point of view, how you feel. Um, And if you're younger, a lot of younger people are trying to explain to their parents and maybe especially their grandparents how things have changed and maybe for the better and how they're trying to play some role in that. But what's happening too often is we're just going into battle and we're kind of like holding very um, ideologue type positions that are wholly inflexible and there's no listening going on at all. And I'm trying to kind of moderate these kind of discussions. And it's virtually impossible. if Nobody's willing to <laughs> not necessarily budge, but at least listen to each other. <laughs> See, yeah, I think you might have just hit on something when you said virtually impossible, because <laughs> this goes on in families. We, I like to call this the Thanksgiving effect. You know, you have everybody that comes in for that holiday and because it's a it's a domestic and uh, national holiday as opposed to a religious holiday you can at least hide behind religiosity when crazy crap comes up at christmas right you can at least right. try to get around that and go hey it's christmas come on right but <laughs> right. The, but 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 thanksgiving is not that because thanksgiving is all about the drinking and it's all about america and it's all about these things you know it's fourth of july will be kind of interesting too this year but what you have is parent especially um grandparents and i want to just look at it this way you got the kids got the parents got the grandparents so the grandparents are going to look at the kids and the kids are going to say hey you know we i can't believe how awful all this is and and you know it, it hold some uh pretty progressive positions on it and then the grandparents and again i know i'm uh, this is you know rather thumbnail of me but it's i believe this is pretty accurate the grandparents are going to go well you didn't you know live what i've lived you haven't seen what i've seen and you'll know by the time you get older and it is true people's positions do harden as they get older and there are are traumas and experiences that they have and sometimes it's just traumatic to watch television right and see things happening as i think for a lot of kids it is and say you don't understand you know those people right i mean that's that's what it comes down to us versus them And, and the parents are often caught in the middle and that's what I want to talk about today with you. And I also want to take some phone calls at 312-981-7200. How do you do that? How do you not harden the hearts of the kids who are watching this and and keep everybody heading in the right direction? And then also honor the experience of the grandparents, even though it may not be the it, it, it may not ultimately come from a place of fact. It just comes from a place of emotion, as all of this does, right? Absolutely, Ro. And, and I think parents are in a really difficult spot. And to make it worse, um, you're, you're kind of stuck in this position where you don't want to go to your parents or your kids and say, hey, just for our kids or just for your grandkids, 
can you just be cool? Can you just not say what you're thinking or, or feeling? Right. Um, exactly right. I think there's the Thanksgiving effect shows up there a lot. But in this issue that's so loaded and so important to everybody right now, um, I think it's probably important to foster some communication between the generations because it's a rare opportunity for that to happen. But that puts parents, and I think you and I are probably in that generation somewhere, um, in the position of playing therapist on both ends of this yeah. situation where we're trying to say, hey, we need you to, you can hold uh, fast to your ideals and your thoughts, but we also need you to have a fairly open mind and hear what this other generation that you know very little about has to say. And you're right, there's a lot of emotion involved um, and there's a lot of, um, you know, idealism involved based on what news channel you listen to, you know? So it's, it's a very difficult thing for parents to do. I've seen a few parents do it fairly elegantly, but they basically have to control the traffic of the conversation, you know, like, right. okay, mom, now okay, you hold go. On one second. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll get to that part because I want to get some phone calls in here. And we'll use all fake names on this because we know what goes on. We know it goes on in the family. There will be the, you know, the grandparents listening to wait to see if their kids are calling and then complaining about them. I understand. I may use a fake name when I do my own complaining here. 312-981-7200. How do you talk to your, how do you talk to your kids about what's going on? And then how do you keep your, the grandparents? And again, there may be some grandparents who are going the other way here too, right? I mean, there's either, there's people who have, I'm, I'm not saying that the older generation is necessarily going to be monolithic in their thoughts here. I did, please do not misunderstand me. But but what we are talking about is a not uncommon thing that happens in families. And because the you know they're generationally the attitudes, the language even. I mean, even if people are coming at this from a good heart, <laughs> they will use terms that are not good to teach the kids, you know, and the kids have probably heard them already, but not to instill in the kids that it's okay, and then all of a sudden there's a triangulation, which we talk about all the time. All right, so we'll get to your phone calls at 312-981-7200. On the other side, Dr. John Duffy is with us. He's he's the official shrink of the show. But first, here's Lauren Latka. She's got the WGN traffic. An accident northbound on the Tri-State is blocking the right lane at the Stevenson, and there's also a crash blocking two right lanes at Willow Springs Road. Also seeing a crash inbound on the Eisenhower. That's in the left lane at the interchange. And on the north side, there is now a demonstration near DePaul around Fullerton in Racine. I'm Lauren Lapka from the IDOT Traffic Center, reminding you to drive responsibly. It really is a matter of life or death. How do you feel when the police take a knee? Our news click results plus speed jokes with me, John Williams, starting at 9. WGN. Grandview buys homes. Hi, I'm Tom Detlich. Grandview has been helping families who want to sell their home for over a decade now. Grandview is different than using a real estate agent to sell your home. We buy the home directly from you in as little as 10 days. I can share countless stories of families who had it difficult to sell home and were so stressed they didn't even know where to begin. With Grandview, the process is simple and stress-free. Contact us for a brief and private appointment at your home, then get your fair cash offer in as little as 24 hours. It's that simple. As the largest direct home buyer in Chicagoland, you can trust us to treat your situation with dignity and respect. Our highly trained team knows their job is to buy your home and solve your problem. Grandview buys homes as is, no matter the condition of the property. You don't need to do any repairs, not even a clean out. Just leave the stress and the mess to us. So call us at 630-506-8282. That's 630-506-8282. Or visit us at grandviewhomes.com. Megapros has been the safest, cleanest resource for your home repairs and improvements for over 43 years. Megapros want to help in any way you need. Questions or resources, fast and friendly. Yes, we can help. Call 847-658-8989 or go to megapros.com. We're committed to protecting the health and safety of your family as we take care of your plumbing, AC, and electrical needs. As always, ABC is here for you. We realize how important it is to keep your home cool and running smoothly. So rest assured, your family will stay comfortable with an ultimate AC tune-up for just $89. Just $89 for peace of mind. Schedule at 4abc.com. That's the number 4abc.com. Consider it cool. Consider it safe. Consider it done. At Amita Health, we believe there's no one quite like you. So we offer care focused on your needs with individualized treatment plans. 
fans and doctors and nurses who embrace you like family. With hundreds of locations and online scheduling, accessing our compassionate care is easy and convenient. Learn more at amitahealth.org backslash access. To find a doctor, call 855-MY-AMITA. Amita Health, in sickness and in health. When it comes to the weather, we all want to know, what did Skilling say? Watch for updated forecasts from Chicago's most trusted meteorologist, Tom Skilling, weeknights on WGN-TV. Everybody's got a story <laughs> of their family uh, sometime around the house, but now especially, because you know, you're heading into there's graduations last couple of weeks. You've got birthdays in the summer. Families are going to be getting together, and as families discuss what's going on in the world, uh, how do you referee the conversation between the kids and the grandparents about what they're seeing on television right now. Cause you know, it, and everybody's got a story about this, about a grandparent saying something at a, uh, and, and not, and again, this is not a, a, against grandparents of, in any way. I'm just saying that there's always somebody at a, at a, at a family get together who says something, maybe it's an uncle who, who says some, something, Dr. John Duffy, who's the uh, team <laughs> psychologist here for the show, uh, that uh, will say something that where the parents are like, oh, God, don't say that, like in front of the kids, like use a uh, racial epithet or uh, express a what is a, a not a now scientifically regarded as accurate opinion about uh, you know where people came from there I, I mean that's this is the kind of thing that people are dealing with right and and now i this like this kind of these last couple of weeks in america just they these are the people are screaming these things on cable news right i mean it's it is like it's it's insane and then and then the 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 grandparents or the uncles or whoever it is bring it back into the into the house and what do you do as a parent to balance that that's what we're talking about 312-981-7200 your stories on that we'll get to them in just a second but uh again uh is there a way you were we were just talking about ways to mitigate this because there are moments where you just want to say to the one person you know is going to be the problem or even to your kids hey don't provoke grandpa or uncle tom or whatever it happens to be Right. Um, and yes, this is this is what we typically do. Instead of refereeing, we just try to avoid the whole discussion altogether. And, and that, by and large, can work pretty well. In this moment, you're right. In these couple of weeks, especially right now, you know, more families are coming to myself. And I, I would imagine most therapists saying, boy, we're running into this massive conflict between the generations. And we do not know how to reconcile or mitigate any of this and it's getting really ugly and we're still trying to maybe quarantine a little bit. So we're stuck in close quarters. <laughs> what do we do? Um, and so I, I think you're, you're nailing the problem um, precisely. And to your point, just before the break, um, in fairness, in some of the families I'm working with, the grandparents are very progressive and the grandkids are the ones who are very conservative and trying to bring their grandparents back to that you know, state of thinking. So it's not always a one-way street, but right, there right. more often than not is conflict around this stuff. Yeah, and is, you know, we, we always talk about uh, teachable moments. We don't. I don't actually talk about those things, but I, I hear that. <laughs> Oprah does. Oprah's always talking about a teachable moment. Are there such a thing? In in this situation, honestly, Ro, not really. Um, that That's a great question because, um, I think there used to be. I think, you know, when I was growing up, there absolutely were teachable moments because we were willing to extract wisdom from our parents and take the lecture uh, and from our grandparents. Now, kids are so filled with ideas and they've learned so much from, you know, Reddit and different, <laughs> different places online that um, they know a lot about a lot. So, they don't feel as ignorant as we might have to what's going on in the world as we might have a generation ago. I think they feel very worldly and they want to share the fact that they have some idea what's going on. So what might have been an easier issue to mitigate a generation ago now is really complicated because we're not just dealing with the opinions of parents and grandparents. We are definitely dealing with the opinions of tweens and teens as well and sometimes younger kids who are um, very, very set in their ways. Well, okay, so you, you just hit on something really, really, really important, is that kids who are raised on computers are going to have a completely different 
set of of facts, essentially, which will be designed either for them by those who are teaching them using the computers or then by themselves after a certain age. And I think that age is like younger than people think. It might be nine or ten where kids are starting to try to find their the answers that they are looking for. And this is one of the problems that we have, I think, in general in the culture, Doctor, if I could just get on a soapbox for a moment, which is that we we now can find an answer to prove whatever we want to argue. We can we can find something on the internet. I I will never forget uh, when uh, the uh, Pierre Salinger, who was once the spokesman for the Kennedy administration in the early days of the internet, came to a press conference waving a piece of paper. Our, with, it was about a conspiracy theory about it. I think it was about a plane crash, if I'm not mistaken, and a conspiracy theory about a plane crash and, and claiming it to be true because he read it on the Internet. And here's a guy who was a press secretary during the Cuban Missile Crisis, right? So, I mean, this is, this is a guy that should have known better than that, and I, and I think that's where we live. Everybody, can, everybody has now their own facts in their arsenal. And we have a, a texter, I kind of like this, is... Um, it said that Fox News has done to grandparents what we were afraid the video games were going to do to the kids. And that it's true. that it, it, I mean, we get ginned up by watching cable news, right? We get ginned up by watching, by reading whatever it is. People at CNN or MSNBC, the same sort of thing. And it, and it just becomes talking points that the political parties or whatever those influences are want to drag us into. And, and that does not help the family dynamic in you know, any way, shape, or form when you're trying to come up with a with a consensus but 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 families are not religions you know they're not they're not everybody's going to think the same way so how do you balance that part right and if i can join you on the soapbox for just a second if there's room um <laughs> i would add to that you know that 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 um we also when we're consuming media we're looking for confirmation biases by the way right you know we're we're, we're looking not to necessarily always learn something new about somebody else's point of view, right. we want to feel good we about never our are. point of view. We never right. are. Let <laughs> me just point that out. That's not what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that makes it even trickier to encourage people in this moment to open their minds to somebody else's point of view. And yet, I don't know a different way to get any useful conversation going, um, especially within a family and within a household, Um, than to listen to one another. And that means more than I will bite my tongue until I can prove you wrong when I get to speak. It's really like um, listening. I I worked with one family row that was pretty cool because we were all on a Zoom call and grandparents were there as well. And the um, parents asked the grandparents to explain to their children where their biases came from from when they were young. And so the grandparents started telling stories. So instead of telling stories off of Fox News, wherever they got their news source from, they started telling stories about their lives. And this was something that the kids could finally get, kind of dig into and relate to. This took a lifetime. This took, you know, the better part of two hours. But finally we got to the point where at least the kids got some understanding of, oh, okay, you're, you're not just, racist or you're not just you know um wildly liberal there's a there's a point of view and there's a reason that you came to this and i can relate to that to some extent i as a 15 year old can relate to what you went through as a 15 year old because i have all this information coming at me and so we can at least agree that you know oh we're all a product of our experiences and your experiences just happen to be different than mine so we might not agree fundamentally on what the right thing is but we can at least agree, like, okay, you're not a terrible person, Grandma. You know, like, and honestly, that is is pretty good for a lot of families. Hey, before I let you go, because I know this is one other thing that we were planning to talk about today, and we got a little sidetracked by this, but the um, the, the Zoom culture that is now yes. uh, overtaking us, and the Zoom cocktail party, the Zoom tail, or whatever the people are calling it is leading to rampant alcoholism in America right now. That is what, that is what we are learning, that the, re, the rehab centers are now having to move. There's, they're now having to actually do Zoom rehab for people. And that is absolutely stunning and scary all at the same time. 
And, and shame on my profession for not seeing this coming, that a Zoom, Zoom cocktail party makes drinking by oneself feel like the norm. And so once that's no longer the norm, you feel like, okay, well, I'm going to continue that behavior nonetheless. And you're right, exactly right, that now Zoom is the home of both cocktail parties and rehab on the back end. How does the rehab on Zoom work? I mean, same, same concept of like, like AA where people sit around and they, they, you know, they, they tell their stories. Are they doing that in the Zoom format? They are um, ex- exactly right. So they run it very much like uh, an AA meeting. And from what I can tell from my clients, there is varying degrees of effectiveness in these meetings. So if people are very engaged and paying attention, great. But what I'm hearing is as the quarantine period has worn on, you can tell that people are like distracted, looking at other screens, laying down while they're talking like some of my clients do. And you realize, okay, this is not a viable uh, method for um, rehabilitation over time. This might work for a brief period of time, but over time people kind of regress to the norm of, you know, I'm on the phone or I'm on a phone call, so I'm going to recline and I'm going to disengage from time to time. And that does not happen in an AA meeting or in um, in residential treatment, for example. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it, you knew this was going to happen. I mean, that's basically, you know, you know, the whole problem here, Dr. John Duffy, is the the computer is ruining us all. It is just it's it's. Gonna, it's going to kill us all. That's the one thing I know for sure. All right, Dr. Duffy, thank you very much. He's our he's the official uh, shrink for the show. So all of us go to him, and we all complain about the same things, which is me. Thank you, doctor. Appreciate it. We've got news from the Northwestern Medicine Newsroom coming your way right now. 70 degrees at 631. Good evening. I'm Kim Gordon. The news is sponsored by GEICO. If the pandemic isn't enough, there's another disease to worry about. There will be baseball. That, according to Commissioner Rob Manfred, as negotiations continue with the players. And in business, help is on the way for child care providers in Illinois. WGN Traffic, here's Lauren Lapka. And this traffic report is sponsored by Plumbers911.com. Do you have a plumbing emergency at your home or business? Don't panic. Call Plumbers911. Plumbers911 provides Chicago land with licensed and highly trained plumbers 24-7. Call Plumbers911 at 1-833-PLUM-911. Major roadways overall look very good right now. Inbound Eisenhower is backed up from Ashland. That's because of an earlier accident. It's a half hour in from 390 on I-65 North. The entrance ramp at 109th is closed for road work until June 16th. Otherwise, in Elk Grove Village, Higgins is still closed between Landmire and Nichols because of an earlier semi-fire. I'm Lauren Lapka from the IDOT Traffic Center, reminding you to drive responsibly. It really is a matter of life or death. The news is next, but first, Tom Skilling's forecast from the Permaseal Weather Center. Tonight, very windy, a period of showers developed this evening, then clouds scatter, cooler, noticeably less humid, a low of 58. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, continue breezy, warm, a high of 78. Friday, sunshine with some mixed clouds during the afternoon and evening, cooler winds off Lake Michigan, strengthening during the day with a high of 66. The first signs of West Nile virus are popping up in Illinois. So far, two batches of mosquitoes in River Forest and Evanston have tested positive. State Public Health Director Dr. Ngoze Azike says it's that time of it year. It always happens around late May, early June. So if that's on track with previous years, we know that the human cases don't happen for, you know, a couple of months after that because the virus needs to cycle between the birds and the mosquitoes enough to finally reach the humans. She says last year was quiet in Illinois with only 28 confirmed human cases, including one death. There's where Johnson & Johnson is accelerating its COVID-19 vaccine testing. The New Jersey-based company announced an early human clinical trial will start in July. It was initially set to start in September. Testing will be done on more than 1,000 healthy adults between the ages of 18 to over 65. In Illinois today, the state announcing 625 new coronavirus cases in the last 24 hours and 78 additional deaths. There are now over 129,000 total cases in Illinois. Governor Pritzker announcing today a $270 million grant program for child care providers. The governor says the money will help child care centers and providers cope with smaller class sizes and new safety protocols without having to drastically raise prices. Every child in every state deserves access to quality child care and early learning services, whether there's a pandemic going on or not. Every parent 
deserves to know that their child is safe and well cared for uh, while they're at work and at a price point that doesn't break the bank. Governor Pritzker says they want to hear from providers about how to best disperse the money. A survey is available online via the Illinois Network of Child Care Resource and Referral Agencies. George Floyd's brother Felonis testifying at a House Judiciary Committee hearing today on policing practices and law enforcement accountability. It comes one day after George Floyd was buried. Right now, I'm happy that we are getting one step closer to justice, but <clears throat> for the time being, I still need time to grieve with my family because I, I haven't had that chance yet. One of the officers at the scene when George Floyd was killed has been released from jail on bond. Thomas Lane is charged with aiding and abetting second degree murder bonded out of the Hennepin County Jail today. Two others face the same charges. Former officer Derek Chauvin faces second degree murder and manslaughter charges. A social studies teacher at Palatine High School is under investigation over accusations of racist social media posts. Alum Aliyah Holloway believes more immediate action should be taken. So that the school knows that they are indeed backing up black people and that they are in support because letting her just go under investigation, I feel like is not enough. It's not enough. District 211 says the teacher's actions don't reflect the values or principles of the district. And once an investigation is complete, appropriate measures will be taken. And now WGN Sports, here's Andy Mazur. Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred said there is a 100% chance there will be Major League Baseball this year. The owners will make another proposal to the union Friday after the draft is over. Manfred did vow to order opening day if an agreement is not reached. The Players Association made its second proposal yesterday, asking for an 89-game regular season and 100% of prorated salaries. The MLB draft is underway. Detroit made the first pitch. Spencer Torkelson is an infielder from Arizona State, went number one overall. The White Sox will be picking at number 11. The Cubs will pick at number 16. This will just be a five-round pick, five-round draft, that is, down from the usual 40 as normal. NASCAR has banned the Confederate flag from all events and properties. NASCAR says the Confederate flag runs contrary to our commitment to providing and welcoming an inclusive environment for all fans, our competitors, and our industry. That in a statement today. Bubba Wallace, the only black driver on the circuit, calls it a symbol of slavery and racism. He's going to be racing tonight in Virginia in a car honoring Black Lives Matter. Several Blackhawks players returned to Fifth Third Arena today for voluntary workouts. The NHL opening Phase 2 of the return to play plan this week. Patrick Kane, Alex Tabrinkit, Alex Nylander, and Malcolm Subban were at the facility today. The Blackhawks will be the 12th seed in the Western Conference. The playoffs set to begin sometime next month. On the home of the Blackhawks, Northwestern Wildcats and White Sox baseball, Andy Mazur, WGN Sports. Your money on WGN. The Dow closed down 282 points. NASDAQ up 66. The S&P 500 down 17. Gold up today. Oil up 2 cents at $38.96. And the VIX at the CBOE unchanged. I'm Kim Gordon on Chicago's very own 720 WGN. Hi, it's Lou Manfredini for the Gilkey Window Company. Did you know that Gilkey Windows have been independently verified to be among the most energy efficient windows in the country? It's true. Gilkey windows eliminate the transmission of nearly all UV radiation. That makes a huge difference all year long, given Chicago's weather extremes. Right now, take $1,000 off five or more windows, $2,500 off 10 or more windows, and take $700 off patio and entry doors, or no money down and no interest for 12 months. Gilkey offers several options to help you. They'll come to your home exercising safety measures, or you can visit their Chicago Ridge showroom open Monday through Saturday, or in Palatine, even open Sundays 10 to 4. If new windows are on your list, give Gilkey a call now and schedule an appointment to get your home renovation underway. Call 1-888-3-G-I-L-K-E-Y or visit Gilkey.com today. Choose vinyl or choose fiberglass. Just be sure to choose Gilkey. Stone Pony, Alex Stone, ABC News, aviation correspondent, editor of Aviation News for the <laughs> Rocon Show. <laughs> you can make up anything. It works. Yeah, yeah, whatever it is. All right. Well, United Airlines has now announced what its new boarding procedures are going to look like. What are they? Yeah, so this is, uh, you know, we talked about a couple of weeks ago, Clean Plus and everything they were doing to make sure their aircraft were clean. Well, now they're going to do a health uh, self-assessment when you check in. That whether it be on your smartphone or if you do it actually at the airport, that you're going to have to say, yeah, I'm healthy. And that 
no, I, I don't think I have COVID-19 before you're allowed to, to actually get your boarding pass, that they're going to say in the last 21 days, did you have a, a fever? Did you have cough? Did you, did you have shortness of breath? Did you have muscle pain? Did you have sore throat, the, the loss of taste or smell? You say, nope, I'm good. Uh, you go through that checklist. They're going to say, were you denied boarding by any other airline? No. Have you had close contact with somebody who uh, you know has COVID-19? No. A few other things, then you're allowed to get your boarding pass. But they say that they're going to make everybody now approve all of that, go through that checklist, say, yes, I accept, before they're allowed to get their boarding pass. Is that enough? <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, listen, I, 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 mean, I don't what, want to get in the way of business. To, what are they supposed to do? Take your blood before you get on? I mean, you know, and sure, people would, if they really want to fly, that they're going to say, yeah, no, no, I'm good, even if they haven't been feeling all that great. But United says on top of all of the cleaning that they're doing, this is beyond what any other airline in the U.S. is doing, that now United is uh, the, the first major carrier in the U.S. to do this. They're working with the Cleveland Clinic and some others. They call this ready to fly and that they say this is a checklist that that they feel like it encompasses pretty much everything that they need to know and as long as you attest to that that yeah i i'm i'm healthy that i don't know that you know i haven't been told that i i do have covid19 that then you can move forward and you can get your boarding pass but it's an honor code thing yeah it really is yeah are they taking your temperature uh, no, I don't believe so. Some airports are now when you, you go up to security screening that before you can go through, they're going to take it there. But the actual airline, uh, no. I wonder if that was on the table because it seems like a good idea. Well, you have to believe it. It probably was that, that they, you know, at some point that it's been something that, that they've talked about. They do ask you here, have you had a fever? Uh, you know, you may be going to an airport where they are doing that and then you won't make it through security screening. But at the gate, no. At the check-in counter, no. And if people are checking in on their mobile phone, you know, do they do it at the gate? Do they do it when you walk into the lobby? When do they do it? Because you're not really face-to-face -face with anybody. Um, or do you leave it up to the TSA to do it? Do you leave it up to the airport to do it, as in some cases they're doing now? There doesn't seem to be one uniform answer to that, but... They're not doing it at the uh, as you're boarding the plane. Maybe it would take too long. Maybe it would be, you know, already they're pretty much arguing with some people to put a mask on. Would they let them take their temperature getting on? That, that just creates maybe more of a problem. Well, I found this interesting. I went to the doctor today, and when I was going into the hospital to go to the doctor's office, they made me stand on a square for a second, and then they let me go through, and that was them taking my temperature. I have no idea how or where they were taking it from. But she said, you don't have a fever, keep moving. And Interesting. I would imagine that that technology, I know we, there's a Chicago company that does that stuff. That technology is available. TSA should probably have it. Yeah, some of the airports, uh, I know LAX has looked into a couple of different uh, types of technology where they can take it when you're, and you don't even know. I mean, like, yeah, like you had today, that you don't know they're taking it, but that they can kind of scan the crowd and, and know what's going on. But for an airline, where do they do it? If it's not the TSA if it's not the airport doing it can you imagine the cost of doing that at every boarding yeah. gate I mean that would be yes. through the roof right I, you know it's, it's tough to say where they would do it well people Alex Stone Stone Pony ABC News aviation consultant to the Rocon <laughs> show I'm gonna come up with a different title every time it just keeps going up and up are there people the president of aviation are there any good signs here green shoots for the airline industry yes uh, their numbers have been going up uh, we know that some of the airlines say that, you know, they were down 90% a month ago. Now they're down 70%. That's a big return based on where we were. Is it great? No. Is it better? Yeah, it's uh, a lot better. The airlines say they're putting, in fact, a couple of days ago, United announced they're bringing back uh, a huge chunk of the, the flights that they had uh, reduced with everything going on, especially out of the hubs, Chicago, Denver, Houston, the, the, they're resuming a lot of uh, those flights. So things are looking better. Is it 100% again? No. Are things looking better? Yeah, definitely, yeah. They, they say they, they definitely are. Well, that's good news because that's a very big 
determinant of the economy. I saw a plane go overhead today when I was walking back. And I thought, man, a plane in the sky. Because it's yeah. weird how few you know, there are. I remember three or four months ago when you know our home is somewhat under the, the landing pattern of the Burbank Airport, and it would just be nonstop. And now you see one, and you go, oh, oh honey, come out here. There's a plane going overhead. <laughs> Right. It's, always, it's like Lindbergh. All of a sudden, it's like, it's like 1932. Honey, what is that? Look, it's got one wing. I, I mean, know. And on the weekends, it's so quiet now. You don't hear the jet engines going overhead. It's pretty uh, amazing. But, right. But it tells you that I would like to get back to normal. And I, I, looked, at, I looked at it, and I'm thinking, oh, my God. I'm trying to figure out which airline it was. It was flying low. It must be going into O'Hare as it was making the turn toward that. And I'm like, oh, this is the best. I started to feel really good and a positive feeling about aviation and the economy. And I'm thinking, well, I can't wait to get back on an airplane. But then I had the second thought of like, oh, I don't know if I want to get back on an airplane exactly <laughs> this week. But, but you know, maybe soon. So that's good. Yeah, I mean, the numbers are going up. So people are either uh, they have to jump on a plane or they feel more comfortable jumping on a plane. And uh, the airlines, they need those numbers to go up. I mean, based on what we know of the, the planes that they've been parking, that the the potential requests they can't necessarily furlough or lay off right now because of the federal money until September or October, but asking people to leave on their own, they've been in a tough, very tough spot. And for the numbers to be coming up, really hopeful of what we'll be looking at. Alex Stone, ABC News. Thank you very much, sir. You got it. Thanks, Rob. Your phone calls, 312-981-7200. I need an answer. Have you flown? What was it like? Because as, as I was just saying, I'm like, I don't know if I'm ready. I'm not sure if I'm ready. I want to be ready. I want to make that. I don't even know where I want to fly to. I, I, maybe I'll just fly one place and get on a plane, come right back. I just want to get back on the horse. Have you done it? I'd like to hear your stories. 312-981-7200. Here's Lauren Lapka. She's got her eyes on the roads. And it's brought to you by the Illinois Department of Transportation. In Naperville, an accident has shut down Hobson Road between Hamilton and Indiana. There's a crash in Schiller Park at Irving Park Road west of Des Plaines. And drivers on I-55 South, be extra careful because there's a family of ducks on the road at Route 53. I'm Lauren Lapka from the IDOT Traffic Center, reminding you to drive responsibly. It really is a matter of life or death. My dad was killed in a crash in Oak Forest. He wasn't doing anything wrong. He was on his way home from my sister's house when he was killed on his motorcycle because someone just wasn't paying attention. If it wasn't for an irresponsible driver, my dad would still be here today. I want everyone to realize that's not just a motorcycle, that's someone's everything. Please drive and ride responsibly. It really is a matter of life and death. Learn more at lifeordeathillinois.com. Seven cars for kids, K A R S cars for kids. One eight seven seven cars for kids. Donate your car today. One eight seven seven cars for kids, K A R S cars for kids. One eight seven seven cars for kids. Donate your car today. To learn more about our programs and to donate, visit us online at cars. Remember, that's cars with a K. Pickup is quick and easy. You'll also get a vacation voucher and maximum tax deduction. Also accepting boats, motorcycles, RVs, and real estate donations. Hey there, homeowners. Have you had that annoying experience of low water pressure in the shower where you hardly had enough pressure to wash the shampoo out of your hair? You know, the same shower that you have to yell, don't flush the toilet, I'm in the shower. Don't put up with this anymore. It's time to get rid of those old rusty corroded pipes and get brand new PEX or copper pipes. Repipe Specialist does repiping unlike anyone else. It's all they do. They've been giving customers great water pressure, clean, clear water, and a pipe leak-free home for over 27 years, serving over 50,000 customers. All in just one to two days at half the cost of a plumber with a lifetime guarantee. Everyone deserves great water pressure. And no more rusty colored water or pipe leaks. Call us today for your free in-home estimate customized for your home. We'll even take 20% off our already low price price when you call us today repipe specialists 800-216-0195 800-216-0195 that's 800-216-0195 
We're just talking to Stone Pony, Alex Stone from ABC News. United Airlines announced their new rules for flying today. They ask you a bunch of questions. Have you or anybody in your family had a fever is essentially the question. They don't take your temperature. you got to take your temperature to walk across the street now, but not to get on an airplane, at least according to United Airlines. And if you've flown, I want to hear from you, 312-981-7200 in the last couple of weeks, because I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure if I'm ready to go. I want to go. Oh, I want to go. And I'd like you to help talk me into it. But was it a scary experience? Was it a great experience? Was it no different than you remember it? Those are the questions that I have for you. And we'll start with Ron. 312-981-7200 is our telephone number. Go ahead, Ron. Oh, yes. I'm from Jefferson Park. Uh, I was down in uh, Fort Lauderdale area for Memorial Day weekend, and I flew on one of the local airlines here. I don't know if I should name it or not. Yeah, but, it doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, uh, unless American you're going to slander them. Yeah, okay. yeah. No, I don't think so. <laughs> no, they treated me well. And okay. well, I'm 73 years old, so they did have a separation of the middle seat. I was by the window, and the middle seat was empty, and then a lady was next to me, and then the aisle, and then her husband. So uh, they were accommodating in that regard. Uh, they generally just give you a, a small bag with water and uh, possibly a cookie or snack, and uh, that was that as far as uh, the uh, uh, accommodations as far as eating. So uh, it was well done, I have to admit. Coming back, the airplane was a little more crowded, and... Uh, yeah, all right, let's talk about that. Well. Let's talk about that, okay? Because you just you know mentioned your age, which which puts you in you know a risk category that you want to be you want to be pretty careful, right? Yeah. Uh, well, we I were don't the, let the old man in, as they say. So in the yeah, I understand. <laughs> I feel the same. I feel the same way, but, <laughs> but sometimes I do. Yeah, you, all right. So were you wearing a mask? Yes. Were you wearing a mask? Yes. Everybody had everybody had a mask. Correct. Yes. And, and they they were they they uh, is that a, an enforceable requirement? Do you think? I would think so at this period, yes. Uh, I don't think anybody uh, was uh, rejecting wearing a mask. Nobody. Yeah. And that's the way they did it. It was well done by American Airlines. I have to give them credit. Yeah, you didn't fly Some to Birmingham, Alabama. That, that might yeah. be a little different there. Okay, all yeah, right, so, so. You, you felt comfortable, though. You liked it. Oh, it yes, okay. yeah. All right. Yeah, everything... Uh, Fort Lauderdale area kind of opened up, Delray Beach up there. Uh, you could sit outside at the restaurants, uh, some inside uh, in Boca Raton. So uh, the beaches were closed other than Boynton Beach. Boynton yeah. Beach was open. You could sit on the beach, no problem. Uh, Delray was a problem. You could walk the beach. You couldn't sit. Uh, the swimming pool at the condo I stayed, uh, <laughs> they... Uh, had to be a uh, resident. You couldn't be a guest. I was a guest. You're a very detailed so, man, Ron. That's what I want to tell you right now. Uh, all right. Thank you, my did, friend. So. Appreciate right, it. You too. Let's... Take care now. Thank all you. All right. You too. Mike, you're on WGN. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Ro. Um, my wife and I just returned from uh, Phoenix, Arizona uh, yesterday afternoon. We spent two weeks there. And um, can I say the uh, carrier? Sure. And, uh, again, unless you're going to slander them, you can say the carrier. No, 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 no. We uh, okay. flew an American uh, mm-hmm. to and fro. And our flight going out from O'Hare was oversold. That's Ooh. how crowded it was. And I was a bit surprised because uh, the emails we had gotten from them and uh, their advertising was that they were going to follow social distancing. And we even saw pictures of plexiglass in the, the middle seat in the mm-hmm. aisles, but uh, none of that occurred. <clears throat> we did have to wear a face mask. That was uh, mandated. Uh, no temperature. Uh, they had... Uh, I don't know if that was them or all the carriers were saying they were going to do that. They did not take anybody's temperature. But it, it was a did good they, flight. Mike, let me ask you, did Go they ahead. ask you questions in advance? Like when you were uh, when you were registering online for your boarding pass or anything, did, you, did they ask you questions about whether you had a fever or anybody in your family had symptoms or anything like that? No, nothing like that at all. Uh-huh. Um, they uh, had no beverage service up and down the aisle, but you could get a beverage if you walked to the back of the plane and huh. kindly ask them for a drink. And um, uh, obviously I had a Coke, but um, the flight coming home was not oversold. There were a few uh, extra seats. One exit uh, row was totally empty, so I have long legs. Uh, my wife there was across go. the aisle for me. Pardon me? That, there you go. That's my that's my play. The exit row is always my play. I try to get that. Sometimes it's twenty five bucks or thirty five well, bucks. Charge, whatever, extra uh, a little right extra for, yeah. charge a little extra for extra row now. And like I say, I have long legs. I was very comfortable there in that go. seat. 
Yeah. Um, oh. We had two beautiful flights, like I say, going back and good. forth. So you um, felt good about it? You felt good about getting on an airplane uh, flight? You know, my wife was a little nervous going. And I said, come on, and let's give it a shot. And uh, uh, everything went well. I, I, I can't say anything bad about it at all. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Mike Bryan, you're on WGN. Go ahead, Brian. Oh, hi, Ro. Uh, yeah, we uh, flew uh, Friday down to the New Orleans airport for a wedding in Baton Rouge. We did the New Orleans and came back Monday um, because... We wanted the nonstop because uh, I'll be honest, we were a little bit, well, me anyway, a little bit nervous about the, um, about, you know, changing to, from one airplane to another, you know, it, it wanted to minimize our exposure. So I guess I was a little bit, tiny bit hypochondriac about it, but they made us wear a mask. It was American um, again, and um, no beverage service or snacks or anything. And, but yeah, it was, uh, it was about half full flight and, uh, they let you, um, you know, after they seated everyone and everything, they uh, let us move to uh, other spots, you know, in the middle of the plane that were yeah. a little bit more socially distanced. So that was good. Okay, let me ask you this, Brian. Were you more worried about the COVID-19 or the fact that you were flying into a hurricane? <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, no, I, I never even heard, thought of a hurricane, to be honest with you. I was, I was more nervous about the COVID-19. And... <laughs> Part of the reason why is because all I, everything I heard was that it's a tropical storm. It looks like it'll stay that way. So, yeah, yeah, I uh, would have I would have been freaked out by the entire prospect of all of the above right there. All right, so <laughs> it, when you're on the plane and you, you said you did have to change planes, you did do that? No, I, 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 I the wedding was in Baton Rouge. I uh, rented a car and drove. Oh, uh, drove. Okay, I, I wanted I wanted it nonstop. I didn't want to have to change planes, and the only yeah, one it. available right. was uh, New Orleans. Yeah. Well, okay. Now let me ask you a question because Baton Rouge—that's that—that's part of the country that I think is going to look at this a little bit differently than some of the uh, northern states or the you know the the more uh, I, you know the, the bigger cities are going to look at this. Yeah. What was the attitude at yeah. the wedding? Was it an indoor wedding or people just did acting like there was nothing going on? It was. Uh, you know what? No one uh, wore masks at the wedding. It was a small wedding. Uh, the service we was uh, limited to. Uh, like 30 guests total um it was supposed to be a big affair you know planned since last year yeah but, but they uh, still wanted to have it so so uh yeah but um i, I have to say the atmosphere uh, for the most part um was it was a lot more laid back in general um although we saw people wearing masks it wasn't everyone i went into several stores um you know like walmart's and so on and there were a lot of people who weren't wearing masks at all so yeah well, we'll just have to see what, what that results in. Brian, thank you very much for the call. I really appreciate it. Into the Night with G comes your way next. Vic Vaughn and the Northwestern Medicine Newsroom comes your way in, too. Is there a jobless college grad in your life? We talk to an expert from the world's largest business networking organization about what steps to take next. Plus, stress, gut health, and keeping your immunity up as you venture outside and back to work. Tonight at 7 with me, G, Into the Night. WG. Lindemann Chimney Heating and Cooling. That's right, Lindemann Chimney and Fireplace is now Lindemann Chimney Heating and Cooling. With over 50 years of world-class customer service, trust Lindemann to keep your family safe and comfortable all year long. With summer around the corner, now's the time to get your annual air conditioning tune-up by the pros at Lindemann Chimney Heating and Cooling. Normally $150, but for WGN listeners, just $97. The best $97 you'll spend all year. To schedule, go to Lindemann.com. That's Lindemann.com. The American Lung Association is here to help you through the COVID-19 pandemic with science-based information you can trust. They have resources on protecting lung health, especially for those with lung disease, medical experts to answer your questions, webinars, and online communities. Visit lung.org to stay informed about COVID-19 and lung health. And while you're there, if you're able, your donation to their life-saving mission is needed now more than ever. Visit lung.org. New car dealers are open and ready for business. The latest cleaning safety procedures offer peace of mind as you shop for your next vehicle. Whether it's new or used, car or truck, you'll find it at one of 400 Chicagoland new car dealers. Begin your search today at drivechicago.com. Here's to all the farm and fleet dads, the ones who get the job done right, the ones who work hard and take pride in what they do, the ones who take the time to pass it on. Show your appreciation this Father's Day with a gift you know he'll love from his favorite store, Blaine's Farm and Fleet. 
For the auto enthusiast dad, five quart jugs of Mobile One synthetic motor oil are just $15.99 after $12 mail-in rebate. 80 ounce jugs of Power Services Diesel Clean and Cetane Boost, only $11.99. Get $30 off all Kurt trailer hitches, installation available. And Reese Swivel Jacks with 1,000 pound load capacities, $29.99. For the grillin' dad, save $80 on a KitchenAid four-burner grill with searing side, only $569.99. And for the chillin' dad, assorted team-licensed two-foot-by-three-foot tailgate toss games are just $59.99. Can't decide what to get, dad? A Blaine's Farm and Fleet gift card is always the perfect gift. Find value at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Serving the great Midwest from Chicago, this is WGN at AM 720 on your radio and on smart devices anywhere just by saying, play WGN radio on TuneIn. WGN Chicago. On Nexstar Media Group Station. 69 degrees at 7 o'clock. Good evening. I'm Vic Vaughn. The news is sponsored by Antenna TV. No official word yet on what caused an off-duty Chicago police officer's death. First WGN traffic, the inbound Kennedy slow between Lake Street and the Burn Interchange. It's about 20 minutes now from O'Hare to downtown. Eastbound I-80 also slow, mainly between 183rd and Harlem. The WGN forecast. Here's meteorologist Demetrius Ivory. Clouds will continue to break up late tonight. The low temperature down to 60 degrees and sunshine comes our way Thursday. The high temperature right around 80. Friday morning. Or sun. We're into the upper 70s there. We do cool down significantly for Saturday. It's only going to be in the mid to upper 60s, cooler by the lake, mostly sunny skies though. And on Sunday, we'll see partly cloudy conditions. We warm up a little bit with highs climbing into the mid to upper 70s. I'm WGN meteorologist Demetrius Ivory. An autopsy on the body of a Chicago police officer was inconclusive. A woman found with him late Tuesday remains in critical condition, believed to be his wife. WGN's Tanya Francisco reporting from the city's Albany Park neighborhood. Family members of Officer Zhu Ming asked for privacy as they gathered some of the family's things, including the son's car seat and other items from the townhome in the 3900 block of West Angsley. Tuesday evening, Ming, who was off duty, and his wife were found in that townhome, unconscious, suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning. A neighbor says she heard the alarm going off for hours. Around noon, one o'clock, I started hearing the, the beeping sounds. A source tells WGN a car in the attached garage was found on but out of gas, and carbon monoxide levels were 140 parts per million, well into the lethal range. The Town Home Association president says neighbors were alerted to the situation later in the evening when Mang's fellow officers arrived to do a well-being check. The father needed to pick up the child in the afternoon, and the police told me that he'd been two plus hours late to come pick his son up. The couple was found unresponsive on the third floor and rushed to Swedish Hospital, where Meng died. Police saluted as his body was put into an ambulance and taken to the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office. We think it was carbon monoxide poisoning. The details are still um, evolving. He's married. He has a three-year-old son. Um, they're very um, nice couple. Ming had been with the department for just under two years. He worked down at the 24th District in Rogers Park. Detectives are investigating. A teacher in the northwest suburbs is under investigation over accusations of a racist uh, social media post. WGN Scanner Hall reports. Some students say they're outraged over a Facebook post from a social studies teacher at Palatine High School. It says in part, I find the term white privilege as racist as the N-word. You have not walked in my shoes, so do not make assumptions about me and my so-called privilege. You think America is racist? Then you have been hoodwinked by the white liberal establishment and race baiters like Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton. Reaction to that social media post from Palatine High alumna, Aliyah Holloway. That is in no relation the same as saying the N-word. And that just shocked me that she said that because it's not the same. In a statement, District 211 says in part they opened an investigation after learning about the post and that once it's complete, it'll follow up with appropriate measures. Uh, went on to apologize for any hurt caused by that social media post, says the comments by the teacher do not reflect the values or principles of the district. Illinois health officials have updated the latest statewide COVID-19 numbers. They report 78 
more deaths during the most recent 24-hour period and 625 new infections. That's the smallest increase in new COVID-19 cases since late March. Conflicting results in the cause of a death of an infant in Chicago have now been confirmed. The medical examiner's office now said COVID-19 did play a role. The latest autopsy on the nine-month-old's body was performed at the Centers for Disease Control shows death resulted from viral pneumonia caused by coronavirus NL63 and COVID-19. Both viruses were present in swab testing. The boy died March 23rd at Mercy Hospital. Family members brought him there unresponsive. They told medical staff he'd been suffering from a cold and cough. Governor Pritzker has announced a $270 million grant program for child care providers in Illinois. The state previously awarded one-time stipends to sitters caring for uh, the children of frontline workers. The governor says the new program uh, makes Illinois the first in the nation to help restore child care through the pandemic. And here's the best part. Because there's no blueprint for this kind of program, we're asking providers to tell us how to design the approach that best helps them reopen safely with smaller group sizes without imposing large tuition increases on families. To get in the program, visit the Illinois Network of Child Care Resource and Referral Agencies website at INCC. RRA.org. WGN Sports NASCAR has banned the Confederate flag from its race.